and welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Hartford Common Council. All proper notices were sent. I'd like to call this meeting to order and I ask for you to please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, Shanna. The mayor and all older persons are present except older person Webb and older person Garza who are absent and excused. Thank you. We have before us a unanimous consent agenda for approval. Move Pres to approve. President Rosniak, second by older person Turchi. Motion by Alder Person Rosniak, seconded by Alder Person Turchi, approving the Common Council minutes of March 12th, 2024. Any comments, questions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. At this time, we've got communications. Hartford Rotary 100th anniversary. We might want to turn these mics down just a little bit. This one's pretty live. So. Okay, go ahead, please. You all should have received communication regarding celebrating the Hartford Rotary's 100th anniversary. So if you have not done so already, you can please, if you could please RSVP by April 10th or as soon as possible. Did any of you receive a hard invitation from the Rotary? Mm -hmm. You did? Sure. Yep. Joe, ask your wife if she got <laughs> mail. I'll, I'll have to ask. Mm -hmm. she, you did she not get one? puts that in my pile. Don't mm -hmm. recall seeing. That. I don't. Yeah, I don't either. But it, it would have been about two, three weeks ago. Yeah, in the mail. In the in the mail. No. Yeah, in the mail. Post mail. Right. Then I would say no. No. Oh. No. Okay. You're invited. <laughs> <laughs> there's your, there's your invitation. Hugger. Thank thank you. And or you can have mine. And when is it then? I will send you a uh, a, kind a of email, email invitation. Yeah, just take a picture and send it to us. So yep. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. perfect. <laughs> Include me in that one. So. <laughs> Any other volunteers for the email picture? Everybody else got one? No, I didn't get one. No? Nope. Oh. All right. See, there you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, uh, next, we have appearances, citizen comments. Any Hartford citizens wishing to appear? You can come up to the podium and get three glorious minutes. Anyone? Anyone? I am not a Hartford citizen, but I am a citizen of Rubicon, and there is an item, agenda item this evening covering Rubicon. May I please speak? Uh, yes. Uh, you, you've given us a lot of information, so I'll, I'll, I'll allow a person from Har uh, Rubicon to speak, please. But you have to go up to the uh, podium, state your name and address. Good evening, Jim Clink, W1494, Pond Road, Rubicon. Thank you. I have been a member of the Rubicon Plan Commission for a number of years, and I would like to comment on agenda item 11, approving the adjusted urban area boundary, specifically its expansion into the town of Rubicon. You should have received a letter from the town raising some concerns that we had from the Plan Commission and uh, giving you some maps and some other information. The town learned of this proposal just days before the March 12th Plan Commission meeting and has been scrambling to get up to speed on its impact on us. I do understand that this deals only with the City of Hartford's ability to apply for highway grant money. The proposed boundary makes small changes along the north and south, but is a very large expansion of the current urban area boundary westward into the town of Rubicon that is not justified by the guidelines in the Wisconsin Department of Transportation guidance document included in your agenda for this evening. I will reference specific pages of that agenda. Page 24 is the map. The original agenda had a grayscale map. You now have a color copy that shows the different boundaries much more clearly. By my best estimate from that map, the current urban area boundary is an area of approximately 14 square miles. That is the area within which the city is currently eligible to apply for highway grant money. 
According to the 2020 census, the city limits encompass 8.42 square miles, so the area outside the city limits, but within the current urban area boundary is approximately five and a half square miles. Focusing in on the area being added to the west, where the majority of the expansion is noted, the adjusted urban area you are being asked to approve tonight adds approximately four and a half square miles from the town of Rubicon and about one square mile from the town of Hartford for a total of five and a half. This approximately doubles the area outside the city limits in which the city is eligible to apply for highway grant money. If I were a citizen of Hartford who lives on a street that is in need of repairs, there might be one, right? I would ask why the city is looking to double the area outside the city limits that are eligible for grants to do highway repairs and improvements when my street inside the city limits is in need of repair. Now I would like to address why the area included in the adjusted urban area boundary within the town of Rubicon does not meet the guidelines provided by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation in their guidance document. Page 32 of your agenda, technical considerations, bullet point four. This is from the DOT guidelines. Include within the adjusted boundary areas, include within the adjusted boundary areas expected to be developed in the next 10 years because the urban boundary adjustment process occurs only once every 10 years include areas that are likely to experience growth and development during the upcoming 10-year window, areas which might be included in the next census boundary definition, unquote. In addition to just looking at the map and asking why there would be any kind of significant growth in some of the rural areas included in that large adjusted urban area being added, there are boundaries defined in the extraterritorial agreement between Rubicon and Hartford as the city growth area. That's that map with the yellow shading and the blue lines that I gave to you. That area covers just under 800 acres or 1.25 square miles. Under the definition of the city growth area in the intermunicipal agreement, it states, quote, this area is deemed sufficient to meet the development and expansion of city limits through the year 2032, unquote. If the 1.25 square mile area defined as the city growth area is sufficient for the next eight years till 2032, why is 4.5 additional square miles being added to the adjusted urban area boundary if it is only supposed to include areas, quote, expected to be developed in the next 10 years, as specified in bullet point four of the guidance document. It would make more sense to include in the urban area boundary only the part of Rubicon within the Rubicon Sanitary District, as that is where it is most likely any major development would occur in the next 10 years. Adding the large 4.5 square mile area is major overreach unless Hartford sees itself more than doubling in size in the next 10 years. I urge you to reconsider this proposal to bring it more closely into alignment with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation guidelines and the terms of the intermunicipal agreement and I would hope that there would be a little bit better communication with the town when things like this come up. Thank you very much. Thank you. On any other topic, any citizen of the city of Hartford wishing to speak? Uh, the third call. Hearing none, we go to oh, the... Oh, okay, please, go ahead. Um, I'm not sure I know all the rules. I go okay, well, the rules are you have to be a citizen of the city of Hartford. <laughs> so, uh, and you get three glorious minutes. Uh, okay. I don't know if I am. I am not. I'm in the town. But it's about a topic where you're annexed to the town Okay, we can only annex property, uh, and then I'll, I'll uh, turn this over if you would please uh, contact the city administrator afterwards. We cannot annex property into the city of Hartford unless we get a petition for annexation, we, uh, with the exception 
of uh, uh, if, we're, if we need it for a water tower. Uh, short of that, we, we don't. Go ahead, Steve. That's item number nine on the, you'll have a public hearing for that. Right. Oh, uh, okay, if, if this is for the uh, uh, public hearing, you will have a chance to speak because we do open that up to all the folks, appearances for and appearances against. So if, if it's, uh, yes, it is, item number nine. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And seeing this will take a while, I do not have anything specific for the mayor's report. At this time, we'll do aldermanic requests. President Resniak. Steve, the barricades are up for Highway 83 South from Monroe South. Have we been notified of that? Have we put out any notices on that? The barricades are up at Monroe and 83. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the story there? Uh, so they had sent us something probably about two months ago that we had put out regarding that it was int intended to be right around April 1st. Okay. And so um, that was the last thing that they had sent to us. Okay. Do we need to notify citizens in Hartford at all on something like that? We don't have, no. No. It's not our responsibility to reach out to the, the citizens regarding it. Okay. The D, that's the DOT's responsibility. When they see the barricade, they'll stop, right? <laughs> well, hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. Alder, thank you. Alder Person Carroll. Nothing today, Mayor. Alder Person Regan. Yes, I'd just like to give an update uh, to everyone on the Mid Moraine Municipal Association Legislative Committee meeting that was held on Wednesday, March 13th in Jackson. The Urban Towns Bill didn't make it out of committee before the Wisconsin legislative session ended, so no action was taken on it. Uh, Josh Showman, uh, Washington County Executive, was the guest speaker. Uh, one of the topics he addressed was the county sales tax referendum that passed last spring. Basically, he said, since the county wasn't involved in the planning and execution of the initiative, they will not support it or even vote on it. Uh, instead, he just referred to uh, shared services that have been implemented uh, with certain municipalities and others he's working toward implementing. Uh, workforce housing was briefly mentioned. Uh, the next generation development uh, being built in Jackson was touted as a great success. I'm glad they've gone back to my uh, original title eight plus years ago with Tom Hostad, workforce housing, mm -hmm. which is what we called it when we started that whole thing. Okay, uh, older person Churchy. Uh, nothing tonight, Mayor. Uh, Alderperson Savage. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Alderperson Kohler. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Alderperson Fulham. Nothing tonight. Thank you. With that, we do start a public hearing. This is a petition for direct annexation by unanimous consent submitted by Home Path Financial for approximately 18.08 acres located north of Autumn Ridge Estates Edition Number 1 and east of County Trunk Highway K in the town of Hartford. The tax key number for the record is T6-049-100D, and T6-049-100H, and t 16800 b I'd like to open the hearing and ask for the reading of the notice. Please take notice that a public hearing will be held at 7 p.m. or thereafter on March 26, 2024, in the Common Council Chambers at the lower level of City Hall, 109 North Main Street by the City of Hartford Common Council to consider the following, a petition to annex property to the City of Hartford. The petitioned area consists of tax key number T6-068-000B and T6-049100D. Said land contains 758,825 square feet or 17.4202 acres. Rezoning the petitioned area to MXD mixed use zoning district will be heard as well as an amendment to the official map. The purpose of the public hearing is to hear those persons who wish to express their opinions for or against the requested annexation, rezoning and official map revision. A map and legal description of the parcel can be viewed at the Department of Planning and Zoning by appointment, 109 North Main Street, Monday through Friday, between the hours of 7.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. This was published in the Daily News March 8, 2024 and March 15, 2024, and 38 notices were sent. Thank you. I just want to make sure uh, you, uh, when you read the number, added another zero. I just wanted to make sure for the uh, recording here or the playing here. The first one you read was T6-068. I have 00B. You said 000B, which is correct if somebody's looking it up. I, I don't know. The notice of public hearing had three zeros and the other one had two. So which? It's three Bs. Uh, I'm sorry? It is three Bs. 
three zeros or three, three zeros? Three zeros, I'm sorry. Three zeros, one B. Okay, so I that apologize. number would be T6-06800B, six six zero 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 unlike the one published on our website. I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Thank you very much. Okay, explanation of hearing by staff. That would be our city planner. I'll open the hearing first. Oh. I did open the hearing. Oh, and then we had a reading of the notice. Oh, I even sorry. hit the gavel. Oh, come yeah. All right. Come on, I miss things, but not that. Pay attention. Oh, yeah, come Pay on. Attention. Uh, explanation of hearing by staff, and I'm guessing sorry. that that would be uh, Jacob. Correct. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So here's the map of Harvest Creek Annexation Area. Uh, if you look here, this little blue area north of Autumn Ridge, this is the Autumn Ridge subdivision north of there. Uh, in the Description in, your, in the write-up, it's 18.08 acres, and then in the actual public hearing notice, it's 17, I uh, can't remember exact, but 17 acres, that's because of right-of-way dedication, so that's why the numbers are a little off and a little different, but these are the parcels here, these two parcels right here that will be annexed into the city. Again, kind of an aerial photograph of where we're at on these two parcels. This is the annexation map kind of giving the legal description of the property and the size. Here is the proposed uh, development. Uh, the reason why it's getting zoned to MXD uh, is because of these parcels right here. Uh, they are townhomes, they're fee simple, so instead of like a condo where they have a shared common area, these are people who own title to the property as well as their structures. Uh, MXD is the or MX yeah MXD is the only zoning district that allows townhomes and then single family units together. So that is why we're moving forward. I, we did receive contact from several citizens in the area about concerns about is this line commercial in here? We don't want commercial on K. This will not allow commercial for this development. This is solely for residential purposes. Uh, it's a unique property you have in the north west and northeast corners, very steep topography on that property, which makes it a little more difficult to develop, uh, which is why the layout is as the way it is currently. Uh, when it first came to the plan commission September 11th, they were proposing uh, 30 single family townhouse lots and 25 single family detached lots. That has since changed because of the, the need for fill. It would, I think it added over an additional $10,000 per development uh, just to bring in 60,000 yards of fill. Uh, so it is now uh, 50 single family or 50 units of which uh, 32 single family townhouse lots and then 18 single family detached lots which are your regular traditional single family lots. Uh, there are a small portion of wetlands on the property, uh, nothing major here. Uh, it is already in the, in the uh, kind of the preliminary plat that they're starting to develop so they're aware of that. Uh, and that can easily be mitigated. There is no floodplain on this property, again, so even with the steep topography and the real kind of valley there, there's no, no floodplain or any kind of uh, fluvial uh, feature, river feature, or creek. <coughs> and that's about it. Uh, from a valuation impact, uh, the single family townhouse lots on average will give <coughs> approximately 45,000 $475.35 a year, uh, which it comes out to about $1,421.10 per dwelling unit. And then the single family ones uh, will be uh, around $33,868.10 at $1,888 or $1,881.56 per dwelling unit. So uh, these will add value to our community. Uh, we're not foreseeing any issues with uh, utilities, fees, or services for that. Uh, development and we're not seeing any impact on the school district as well. Thank any, you very any? much. At this time, we would ask appearances for anybody <coughs> looking uh, in support of the petition of this direct annexation by unanimous consent. Uh, any persons for uh, just uh, come up to the microphone and uh, you get three glorious minutes. Anybody for? Third call, anybody for? Hearing none, we go to appearances against. Uh, I believe there was a, a woman. Anybody wishing to uh, uh, speak against the direct annexation by unanimous consent by Home Path Financial? Uh, anybody, please just come up to the microphone, state your name and address, and you get three glorious minutes. 
right. pull it up, please. That, thank you very much. You're right. a tall guy. They're good? <laughs> yeah, it's good. All right, my name is Mark Berg. Uh, address is 1472 Walnut Court. Uh, uh, abuts the property uh, in proposal. Um, just some comments on it. Uh, you referenced that there's a wetland um, as part of that, uh, where that road is planned to come across from Patton Drive there is exactly where the wetland comes through. Uh, if you drive out that way uh, in the past week, it's been flooded, it floods every spring, it's wet all the way through summer. They typically don't plant that part of the field or whatever they do plant doesn't grow. Um, so the concern is those of us that uh, abut that property in question, they're going to have to do considerable filling. I know you said they uh, changed their plan around so it wouldn't be as drastic, but to fill that road in so it comes on plane, um, what's the uh, projected impact to those of us that already have existing properties? Um, once you fill that wetland in, where's that water going to go? And then as well as has there been an environmental impact study done um, I know you said that it wouldn't be difficult to mitigate the wetlands, but what's the process of, process of that? And then long term as a city <coughs> taxpayer, we're now putting a road directly over wetlands or a peat bog or whatever it is there. It continues back behind the daycare center on the, other, on the west side of K there. Um, what's the su sustainability of a road long term that we're now investing in as, as we'll once it's no longer development, it'll be part of the city road system. So um, on top of that, the, the wildlife and everything that's back there, um, and is there commitment that they'll for sure be um, condos or owned units and not rentals that we don't have subsidized um, properties uh, abutting our neighborhood? That's all I've got for questions Excellent. on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, uh, appearances against. Thank you for your patience, ma'am. Just uh, state your name and your address and you get three glorious minutes. Okay. Uh, my name is Betsy Miller, 3336 County Road K, Hartford, Wisconsin. What? Can you pull the microphone? Oh, in front? you can't hear me? No, no okay. up a little. You, just point, you got to point it at your mouth. There you go. Perfect. There Thank you very much. I guess I don't sing there enough. Uh, Betsy Miller, 3336 County Road K, Hartford, Wisconsin. So I'm directly north of this parcel you're talking about. And of course, I am against it because I like my land out there. But I do have some concerns. And I had not seen that map before. I was trying to figure out, are those single homes? Well, anyway, that's a question. I'm just stating my stuff. Um, so I have some concerns because I think it's important that um, I'm not as well together as Mr. Klink. There's, it's a vet clinic. We have a dog kennels there. We have a farming community. I want to be sure that there's some sort of protection for the people that are surrounding this in the way of berms, trees, that sort of thing. I also have a concern over the waterways. Um, I know they said there aren't any, but there are quite a few if you live there that you see. Um, also, I worry about how close they're going to be to my property. We do have a lot of drugs in our clinic. I don't know what I'm going to have to do in exchange for that. Also, I agree with the man. Uh, are they going to be owned or rented? Are there going to be a lot of high traffic areas in there? Um, I'm trying to go really fast. You have plenty of time. Yeah. Where's the clinic? Um, traffic. How, where's the road? come in, is it going to be coming in off a of K? That's not a question, a statement. I guess I was concerned about how much that might interfere with the traffic or problems with our entry off a of K. Um, and I'm thinking that's mainly what I had. I was trying to say it really fast. Yeah, that's about it. You, I would say you have two minutes left. I, mean, I you, do? You were going quite quickly. So I know, because I, I get yeah. nervous and I'm not oh. prepared because I had to rush because I work all the time. <laughs> so I realize that the town of Hartford is going to extend. I would just like some way to make sure that I think it's only fair that we have some protection from people that would be moving into that area and they need to know that there will be noise coming from our clinic. There will be dog barking. We have people coming in. 24 hours a day. We have horses. Um, I want to make sure there's a way that if they're offering to put up trees or fences or whatever to make sure that people don't come onto our property. There's also the um, schoolhouse that we've redone and I'm going to have to find a way to protect that from people that are going to be coming into that area. 
Uh, I guess that's primarily what I was concerned about. I guess I'd like to see what they have. I know that I have to work with them. I just would like it to be a pleasant thing. And if they can come up with something that would work for me, it would make me really happy. That's Wonderful. it. Thank you very much for um, your time. I can't oh. ask one question, Ryan. What was the name of the company that's developing it? This guy right here? Home Path Financial is uh, the, uh, and, and it's gonna be called the Autumn Ridge Estates Edition. If you're looking for specifics, you'd be able to take any questions uh, offline, in? Jacob? Jacob? Yep. All right. Okay. I'm not the developer. I'm the city planner. I understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. She asked me if I oh. was the, oh, yeah. Um, so, again, I'll go out to the first couple. So, why this makes sense to us is, first of all, you have Hartford Square here, which is high-density residential, and the property in this northwest corner of the development. He's showing it up on the screen. Man. Up on the screen here. So this is high density development right here uh, to create a buffer between the single family to the south here and this property. Uh, these duplex, not duplex, these single family attached dwelling units, so townhomes, will be in this northwest corner here, uh, which create- Single family homes? They are single family, owner occupied. You mean uh, you're talking about these right here? Correct, those are owner occupied. And then these here are your traditional detached single family units. I don't know what that means, detached single family units. A, a, a house on its own lot. What are these up here? Townhomes. Those are townhomes. Oh, I thought you just said they were single homes. But they are single family, yeah. The property, each individual owns the property and the house. Okay, but how many families go in each one of those homes? One. One, single families, yeah. So they're all just one family per square. Yep. They seem really close to that. How far away are they going to be from the boundary line here? Uh, they have to meet the setbacks of, of the MXD zoning district, plus there's this extra buffer yard here, which isn't required by code uh, that the developer is putting in there on their own. And any other questions you can just ask Jacob. No, 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 you don't have to be sorry. I, you, you know. No worries, no worries. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, next discussion by council. Well, we might have oh, we have, I'm sorry, we do have another one. Okay, <laughs> wonderful, thank you very much. Okay, just please come up, state your name and address, and you get three glorious minutes. Um, Ellen Leland, 1464 Walnut Court. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, Ellen Leland, okay, 1464 thanks. Walnut Court. Thank you. So I'm right next to Mark. I'm actually- Oh, okay. So my concern, this is our property right houses. Um, my Thanks. property has about 15, almost 20 foot hill um, into the properties that are planning to be built. So my concern is, I guess, how high up this is all going to be built and if it's just going to be a big creek behind us and basement issues, things like that. Um, I guess just where the fill is going to end up um, for that. Um, and I'm also a little concerned about um, just wondering who is going to be building. I know in our subdivision we have multiple different builders. I guess is that going to be assuming to happen in this one as well or is it one builder that's going to be building all the homes? Um, and then I do have pictures of what it looks like right now. It is completely flooded into like the second layer of townhomes right now. Um, I don't know if you guys want to see it <laughs> or not. Um, but I do have that. If I can yeah, email if you have someone any, or... If you have any pictures, you can give them to uh, Jacob Moss, the city planner, and he can incorporate that into when he's you know, speaking with the developer. Is it going to be one builder? Do you know? Just... Yes, Home Path Financial does their own development. Oh, yes. there you go. Perfect. I didn't know if they were okay. selling it to anybody. Okay, perfect. That's all I needed. Great. Thank, thank you very you. much. <coughs> and now I will look up and see before <laughs> anyone else. Seeing none, we go to uh, discussion by council. Yes, uh, President Rosniak. Jacob, um, <clears throat> big concern about water out there. Is a retention pond mandated in that subdivision? This development would have to would meet would have to meet NR 151, which is the DNR stormwater standards. Okay. Uh, they would have to model their their stormwater runoff from this to be contained in a one year a 100 year or one percent chance flood event storm event. Uh, so they would have to to develop that as well as part of the plan is to create a grading plan that is reviewed by the city engineer staff 
and they would review that and make sure that there are no issues with flooding in the, in the future. Uh, and again, this is just the annexation portion. We still have to go through the preliminary platting process as well as the final plat process. Okay, but obviously that will all be taken into consideration. Yes, okay. yes. <clears throat> Second question, Patton Drive comes up to Highway K across the road from this. Do we have plans to extend Patton Drive into there or is there a different entrance or signage? What's planned out there? So if you look up here, this is Patton Drive right here. It goes straight across yep. into the subdivision. So Patton Drive will mm -hmm. be extended into the subdivision. And we'll call it East Patton Drive? <laughs> we'll have to, when, we, when we develop, when we get to the preliminary platting, we'll give it a name. But okay. to, at that point, up until that point, it, we'll, we'll just consider it Patton Drive East okay. for right now, but yes. And again, County Trunk Highway K is in the jurisdiction of the county right now. Uh, we don't have jurisdiction over that portion. So speed limit, if people are concerned about speed limits and stuff like that, that's more of a county issue than a city issue at this point in time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Super, thank you. Any other discussion by council? Any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, I got a couple. Please, go ahead, uh, Alderperson Fulop. Just clarity on the speed there. So the speed there is 40 miles an hour, and now we're gonna have a crossroad going across those subdivision areas. Who controls that speed? I believe that is the county at this point in time. Um, if we really wanna do anything, I think we'd have to do it. There'd have to be a traffic study to figure out what is all would be required there. Uh, generally speaking, uh, Turns or stop and go lights require a certain interval or a number of certain number of traffic average daily traffic load for for that to to uh, to put that into into uh, practice by the city or by the county. So it would probably have to be a, a study done. Uh, again, it's the county's road, and they're the ones who would have to mandate that. And just would like some clarity on this conversation with the water concerns. I think we had a meeting um, a couple of times several weeks back on developments that were done way way in the past where consideration for water impacted neighbors and, and, and so on. So the guidelines that are given by the DNR with respect to water retention, they also take into consideration the effect of the change in the topology and what's going to happen with the neighboring properties as well or is that guidance provided by the city? There, there's a technical, the DNR has a technical standard on stormwater and how to, how to treat it and or how to direct it. Uh, so whoever develops it will have to, they're engineers, they will hire an engineering firm and they will work with the city engineer to make sure that all stormwater runoff <coughs> meets NR 151 guidelines. Uh, there's also, we also are in the Rock River uh, TMDL basin, so there's gonna have to be phosphorus and sus total suspended solid trapment in that, which often takes it the requirements above the 100 year floodplain uh, catch or catching a 100 year flood. So uh, I'm not concerned about, about uh, stormwater so much because of these regulations that we have in place now. Uh, again, with the older subdivisions, we probably did not have NR 151 or NR 151 <laughs> in the technical standards were in their infancy. And also we have newer, it's model, it's based off of, 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 of of a storm water model that uses 40 years of data. The last 20 years have been pretty wet. This data is now in there. So they're calculating based off this wetter data than when 80s, 70s, and early 90s type of data. So they have better data sets now for forecasting storm water. And your, your confidence is high based on the comments that were made to address the standing water issues as well as those marsh areas? The wetlands will have to, again, if they, if it, Wetland law was kind of, it was not, it was, it was kind of relaxed a bit for development in, in urban areas. Uh, so long as you don't disturb a certain amount of area of wetlands, uh, you can, you can, you can go in there. But if you start going over a certain acreage, then you have to start mitigating and the mitigation process is, is expensive and the developer would already knows that type of stuff. So they've, they've already researched this stuff so they know what it's gonna take to put this road in and what kind of fill, what kind of grading that, that they have to do to, to create this intersection and this, this road. Thank you. Nothing else, Mayor. Thank you. Any other discussion by council? Hearing none, I'll close the hearing and ask for possible action on ordinance number 1482. This is an ordinance annexing territory to the city of Hartford, Wisconsin, east of County Trunk Highway K and north of Autumn Ridge subdivision. Uh, Look for 
a motion for possible action on this. A motion to approve. Motion to approve uh, Alderperson uh, Kohler, second by Alderperson Turchi. Is this to suspend the rules? To suspend the rules. Okay. Of course, it's an ordinance. Motion by Alderperson Kohler, seconded by Alderperson Turchi to suspend the rules for immediate consideration of proposed ordinance number 1482. For suspension, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. And for passage, Alderperson Kohler, Alderperson Turchi. Motion by Alderperson Kohler, seconded by Alderperson Turchi for the adoption of proposed ordinance number 1482. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. <clears throat> Motion carried. Thank you. We don't have anything for finance and personnel, public works, or utilities, so we go to resolutions. Item number 11, uh, resolution number 3671, resolution approving the City of Hartford adjusted urban area boundary. We have an executive summary attached, and I'm going to hand this over uh, with an explanation to uh, Jacob and to Steve. I know, Steve, uh, you were going to be commenting as well. Yeah, so again, just to give the, the board, again, you've gotten a chance to review the packet, the information which has been handed to you also tonight. Um, so again, the Wisconsin DOT came out with a change in which we were no longer a part of the West Bend urban uh, boundary areas. Uh, and what that does is basically says that from now on, um, when you petition to get DOT funding, you're gonna have to do so on an individual basis. It's no longer petitioned by the county, and then us obtaining it from the county. It's going to be basically we're competing with everybody in the state for these funds. Uh, that's for both uh, state and federal funding for, for highways. Um, anyways, so they came back with a recommendation, and I'll have uh, Jacob talk more about why the reasoning was behind um, the, where the, that map was was drawn. But basically, it just it's it's all about the fact of um, where you can request to get funding for, for highway money. Um, it does not annex any property in. It doesn't prepare it for annexation. It's just the fact if you no longer would go through Washington County, ask Washington County to get the funding. It's now we're on our own. We are our own team, and we have to hope to compete against everybody in the state to get this funding. Now, in the situation where we, uh, the, the urban boundary area has been expanded. And again, I, I'll let Jacob explain the whys. But what happens is the, the, the uh, state highway obviously would stay in the town of Rubicon in those areas where it's currently in the town of Rubicon. But what we, we would do is we would actually be teaming up with them to petition to get money for those, um, those that, that funding for those roads when they fall within the, the town of Rubicon. So it's not like as though we're taking over those roads. It's not about we're getting something, you know, money. Obviously, we're going to petition to get money for our state highway uh, that, that fall within the city limits. But because of this, how the DOT has petitioned this whole thing, again, if it's, a, if it's an expanded area, we would then also help those other areas uh, to, to petition to get the funding. So I'll let Jacob talk more about the why. All right. So again, here is the, the map that was included in your packets. Uh, you can see, I don't know if the most is working, but yep, there it goes. So this is the area mostly in discussion right tonight from the, from the town of Rubicon. Uh, a zoomed in here, uh, we've looked, the reason where, I'll give you the reason, we're looking at anything south of N, east of P, and then north of Pond Road. Uh, the reason for that is, one of the issues is, or the city of Hartford 20-year urban sanitary sewer service area. Uh, this is kind of sewer packs map of all the sanitary service areas in their region. So you have cities like Whitewater, or Whitewater and, and uh, Hartford, uh, they all expend, st extend into adjacent townships and counties uh, around them that are not part of sewer pack. Uh, here is the zoomed in Hartford sanitary boundary. Uh, you can see here is about Goodland Road, and then you can see Rubicon Sanitary District number one. That is directly connected to our, our, our uh, wastewater treatment facility. So we're treating Rubicon's 
sanitary water from, from their uh, subdivision development out in the town of Rubicon. Uh, so that is why anything north of 60 and east of P is considered urban area for our, or why we requested the urban area for the highway. And at the end of the day, this funding is not for local roads, like your smaller roads like Pond Road or Goodland Road. This is for State Highway 60 or your county roads. So this has nothing to do with the smaller roads. That's a totally different funding mechanism. Uh, it's, it's the recognition that these roads are the conduit by which these utilities run. I mean, when we do road reconstruction, what's the one thing we always do? We run our utilities with them. Uh, when we are looking for funding from the state, it would not be in our it would it would not be wise to blindly not think about driving utilities with these developments of state and co county roads. The next one is why south of 60 but north of uh, Pond Road. Uh, as part of the 2007 intergovernmental agreement, it does allow for annexations outside of the city growth area for utilities. Uh, in 2009, well 16, which is right here, went online. So we have this, and this is our highest capacity well. If you look at our wellhead protection area for this, this uh, piece of road, or for this, for this well, it, it's, it's very large when you compare it to the other wells it, that the city uses for its water source. So knowing that this is south, south of 60 and extends to, to P, and then goes down, because we have been requested by individuals, and we've always told them no, about running utilities out to P. Uh, some of them are, are municipal-minded uh, entities out that way. Uh, but for the most part, we've been requested to have these utilities served out there. And again, this, this agreement only runs till 2032. This is 2024. 10 years from now is 2034. We don't know what the next intergovernmental agreement is, and I don't want to handicap the city of Hartford in this agreement. Uh, it's, that's my job, is to make sure that we move forward in the best interest of the city. Uh, that is why, again, because of well 16, uh, a super high capacity well that has ability to deliver services along the 60 corridor and up down P, uh, it, it makes sense from a planning perspective, not just in the next 10 years, but 20, 25, 30, 40 years down the road. So that is why we're asking for south of 60 and north of Pond Road for the extension of the urban area boundary. So again, that's the why to this whole situation, and, and you understand you know, why we're even involved in this whole situation under ex my explanation earlier on. Um, th th again, this is a... a uh, mandate uh, brought down by the DOT, uh, and we're just simply trying to get this, uh, you know, figured out and straightened out. This does nothing as far as impacting um, the township as far as what they can do in the future. This all has to do with what the DOT is allowing and, and having us do as far as partnering with them to help them get funding for DOT-funded roads. Any questions? Go ahead, uh, Alderperson Regan. Um, so it, it sounded like you addressed it, but uh, I would assume the only state road is State Highway 60, correct? Correct, and then it also cover, will cover funding for county roads, so P and N would also be covered under this, this funding, uh, but the local municipal roads would not be. Which would be Pond Road. Pond Road or... Uh, or any of the other... Goodland, yep, yeah. yeah. President Resniak. So this was mandated by the state, by the DOT? They Correct. reached out to us, yes. Okay. And what, five or six of you guys formed this committee and came up with this plan, right? Myself, city engineer, as well as the utility departments right. sat down with the DOT. We did a <clears throat> teleconference with them. We went over the boundaries. They had a bunch of questions. Uh, they are doing it with Slinger as well, and then West Bend and Jackson. So, uh, but <clears throat> they were the ones who sent out the invitations uh, not not the city of Hartford, so we didn't have any determination on who got invited to okay. to to the conversation. And, and keep in mind, again, it was there when they sat down with us. They recommended the idea of looking at 
those utilities that are out there as helping to guide as to where your boundaries are. Sure. I think the good news, too, for you, Town of Rubicon guys, and thank you guys for coming. I think the good news is somewhere along the line, you might want to build, rebuild Rome Road. We need, you need our help, we need your help in, in getting that state funding, or those grants and the whole bit. So I think what we have to do is work together on this. This isn't our idea of expanding into Rubicon. We're not going to do that. Absolutely not. This is a DOT mandate, and it looks like a pretty good plan. It's unfortunate you weren't involved in it or informed of it, but neither was the town of Aaron, neither was the town of Hartford. Townships were not involved in this. Right, Jacob? Correct, okay. from my understanding. So... So you weren't the only ones left out. So that was a state decision as to who was at the meeting. It was yes. their meeting. Yes. They okay. sent an invitation to uh, City Clerk Shannon Kreilkamp, and sure. she forwarded it on to us. Sure. Okay. And don't blame the nine of us that are sitting here, because we just found out about this a few weeks ago. So it's new to us also. All the first follow. Yeah. So, so just clarity, because uh, President Rosniak made a comment. Rome Road's not included in anything like this, right? This is... County, county? County roads and then uh, State Highway 60 are the ones that we'd be using funding mechanisms. I said if Ru Rubicon wanted to fix up Rome Road, we could assist them or, or endorse it. We would, we'd together. be co-petitioning for their funding. Sure, that's right. Co I mean, it, it's sort of like having your father show up with you when you buy your first car mm -hmm. to help you with, you know. He did, yeah. Thanks, so. <laughs> Please, gentlemen. So, so l l let, me, let me get clarity uh, on this. So our motivation on 60 is the fact that we've got a well there and we want to protect the road that brings the water to our space. Is that, is that the idea or why are we so interested in the association with the infrastructure for the water? Roads are the basis for extending or your utility infrastructure. Uh, again, sort of you, don't have to, you don't have to run the water there, but you can, when you redo the roads, you can put that infrastructure to make it ready for that. You don't have to necessarily run the water down that road, but you can put the infrastructure in to facilitate that in the future. Any other the, questions? I, yeah, oh, I, ahead, I, 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 I want clarity on that. So then sure. wh why didn't we extend farther north? Why did we just limit it to where we have it there? I mean, I, I understand the fact that you guys want to capture this area for the well for, for, for your future expansion reasons, but why did we limit our, our growth then? Why, why didn't we make it bigger than it is well, with we, that logic? So we have, on this map here, we have County Trunk Highway N, and that's the northern expansion of where we're asking. And this is currently where the uh, Rubicon Sanitary District number one is located. So this would allow us, if the town of Rubicon wants to expand or the sanitary district wants to expand along P or N, this would allow us to petition for funding along with the renovations of P or N to get, to get the federal funding to allow for those expansion of, of sanitary sewer service to those, to those subdivisions in the town of Rubicon. And that, and that they would remain in the town of Rubicon? It would remain it would in the town of Rubicon. It would not be annexed. It would nope. just make it much more convenient Correct. and, of course, less expensive down the road if you'll pardon the pun. <laughs> Correct, because otherwise they have... They either would have to change something up for, for their uh, septic systems, right. and or they'd have to develop their own pond system for wastewater treatment. Uh, Jeff, go ahead. So I mean, it, it based on the drawing, it looks logical. You did get guidance during your meeting, correct? Correct. Okay, so I, I do not see much into this. I think we're overanalyzing this as a council here. Okay, I think the staff did a pretty good job. Thank you. Any further discussion? I would look for a motion for the resolution of possible action on resolution number 3671, Alderperson Turchi, second by Alderperson Savage. Motion by Alderperson Turchi, seconded by Alderperson Savage, approving the adoption of proposed resolution number 3671. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 No. 
Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, item number 13, City Administrator's Report. Discussion and consideration of authorizing appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Wandra Construction, West 2874 Greylog Road, Iron Ridge, for the 2024 West Wisconsin Street Storm Sewer Modification bid at a cost not to exceed $32,840. And with that, we turn to our City Administrator, Steve Oker. So part of the approved uh, 2024 CIP budget, um, you approved the, um, again, sewer, uh, ex uh, storm sewer extension out by Wisconsin and Wacker. Um, the bids went out and we received, and I apologize, I'm trying to pull that one up. Um, we received uh, several bids and the lowest bid came in from Wonder Construction. Uh, just so you understand, again, the location of this, um, this is located uh, on the corner of Wisconsin and Wacker, uh, Wacker um, Logistics. Um, and again, they will be actually doing the work to put in the, thank you, uh, to put in the uh, storm water retention pond. And uh, we're just putting in the, um, the piping basically to get to the water to that which was a part of our plan. So you already approved this on the CIP budget. Again, uh, the total budget for this was $67,500. Uh, um, but again, it came in quite a bit less, 32,840 was the low bid from Wonder Construction. And in front of you, you see the four different um, uh, quotes that we got. Any questions? Go yes, ahead. Alderperson Rosnian. Does this run from Wacker? All the way to <coughs> Grant Street, that entire stretch. Wacker to Grant behind Time Trucking. It goes uh, to the to behind the trucking firm. Yes, behind it, but not all the way out to Grant Street. Or not? I apologize. I don't have a map of it in front of me. I would assume they'd go all the way to Grant Street. I can't tell you okay. the answer to that question. We'll find out. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Again, I'd advise you to look at the CIP budget for 2024. That would explain exactly where it was going. Any other questions? If not, Mayor. Thank you. Would look for a motion to approve. Alderperson Savage, second by Alderperson Regan. Motion by Alderperson Savage, seconded by Alderperson Reagan, authorizing appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Wander Construction, Inc. for the 2024 West Wisconsin Street Storm Sewer Modification bid at a cost not to exceed $32,840. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried, and I do have one question for our city administrator only because my phone has been ringing and I just wanted a clarification, which I should have asked during the mayor's report, and that is all that man-made thunder that's been going on the last couple of days off of Wacker with those explosions. Uh, could you tell us again what that is? Uh, yeah, there's a company out by um, Wisconsin Wacker area that basically uses um, the... Um, Explosions, but it's it, it's the uh, uh, how they make their product just basically by uh, using that to again uh, drilled into. I guess the best way to do is to to for their product. Um, they have to let us know in advance at least two weeks right. in which they did. And as you all read mm -hmm. in your weekly memo, yes. um, that was uh, let us know that they were going to be doing so uh, late last week into this week. So yep. Okay, just wanted to make sure. And last so night it was thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I know they put up signs and all that, but I know my uh, uh, just going through Walmart while they were going off and people were just thinking that they were being shelled and I tried to explain to them that no, this was, we, we notified and there's signs up on Wacker. And, so, so, so it's a manufacturing process, not construction. Somebody that is correct. correct, yes, right. it's, a, it's a manufacturing process. And, and they probably do it about a dozen times a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Alrighty. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And with that, uh, motion to adjourn. Alderperson Savage, second by Alderperson Carroll. Motion by Alderperson Savage, seconded by Alderperson Carroll to adjourn at 7.53 p.m.
For adjournment, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So, we stand adjourned. Aye.